Welcome back to the G and Ursula show. It is Dre sitting in with my main man, Felix. Um, Felix, I am really, really passionate about this topic we're about to talk about. Um, for people who don't know, I've always been really passionate about building black wealth. And when I say building black wealth, I think it's about intentionally, intentionally trying to challenge people to support black owned businesses. I can give you a myriad of reasons why, but I won't. Um, we have a special <laughs> guest coming on with us in a moment. But before I do that, I want to tell people a story. I speak at a lot of colleges and high schools, especially in the Northwest. And in talking to them about this topic of intentionally supporting black owned businesses, um, I always ask them, can you name me three black owned businesses in the state of Washington? And to be honest with you, no one can do it, right? Especially if the, the, the high schools or colleges are predominantly white, they cannot do it, right? Which is a challenge and is interesting. And so, um, but the one they always name is Ezel's Chicken, right? So <laughs> shout out to Ezel's Chicken. It's one of my favorite brands. I've been lusting after it for a while now since I'm back in Seattle. So that being said, interestingly enough, I'm excited. We have with us today Lewis Rudd, the owner of Ezel's Chicken. How you doing, Lewis? I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Dave. How you doing? Man, I am doing wonderful. Now, Lewis, you're doing something really, really Amazing. You have an initiative that you're working on. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Um, very excited about it. You know, it's always amazing when you start out with a dream and you pursue it and it becomes a reality, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, the Rudd's Rub Initiative is real. It's alive and uh, it's becoming impactful in the uh, African-American community and helping out uh, Black-owned businesses. And... Um, started out as a conversation and an idea with um, a very uh, special rep at DoorDash. You mm -hmm. know, uh, during the pandemic, Ezell's was doing fairly well. You know, we had a business model that was pretty much geared for and ready for uh, the uh, pandemic and its effect on businesses, which was 80% takeout to begin with, mm -hmm. and we have partnered with DoorDash and built a huge follow, uh, following on their platform. We were actually thriving, and DoorDash approached uh, Ezell's with an opportunity to uh, do a special promotional campaign. And, you know, during this time, uh, Dre, there was a lot of focus by a lot of people across the country, not just across the country, across the continent, mm -hmm. on addressing what had become, you know, uh, to many that was not aware of it, there were people becoming so much aware of the social injustices and inequalities that had affected uh, the African-American community, people of color and minority businesses. And DoorDash was one of those that said, what can I do to help? And so, and because we were doing well, I said, can we divert those funds to some businesses in the community that I'm aware of and know that are not doing as well? You know, it would be great for Ezell's to continually grow and advance. But here's a time when we have an opportunity to support other Black-owned businesses in the community that are not doing well, that are struggling. So it started there, and here we are. Now, for clarity, Ezell's is going to be giving out 20 grants to different Black-owned businesses within the community. Um, and is this a starting point? Is this something you guys want to keep going? What, what's the thoughts around this? Definitely something that we hope will catch on and grow in other communities and other states and uh, other business owners will pick this up and support it. And, you know, there's a definite need to support African-owned businesses, uh, Black-owned businesses. Um, and so, yes, it's starting out, we're going to do 20 grants or awards, no strings attached. There will be, you know, a process by which uh, the businesses will be selected and, we want to keep the integrity of the program of such that, you know, it's not going to be looked at as Lewis hooked up his homies <laughs> with <laughs> grants. But, no, you know, we want these businesses to be deserving and worthy of um, support financially. And there's a lot of businesses. And, you know, 
right now we're we're so surprised with the amount of response that we've gotten so far mm. and the amount of attention that this has gotten and the number of applicants that have already uh, filled out applications for these grants. That was conversations at one point around, well, you think $2,500 can help a business? Well, yes. Mm -hmm. And right now there's over 225 applicants so far that have applied. So the money just, it's like, it's just toward the bottom line for whatever this business, particular business needs to, is is it sort of meant to get through the pandemic or is this something bigger than that? Well, it's bigger than that, but it starts with, so let me give you an example. I was well aware of a couple of businesses that I had personal relationships with <clears throat> that due to no fault of their own had to close their doors for weeks and months. Mm-hmm. And this business was their only source of revenue. So nine months later, there's no opportunity for them to go out and get a bank loan. They didn't get any of the PPP money. Mm. But they've got these lease payments that are due for the equipment in their business that's necessary to keep their business going. Mm-hmm. They can't get a loan because they don't have cash flow. And if they don't have the equipment, they can't get their business up and running again. Yeah. So knowing that there were businesses like that that were struggling with, again, just getting their business, their doors up, open and the business up and running again, a small grant like this is the difference between them going out of business and begin to grow their business again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so f- for people who don't know, we-, we are talking right now with Lewis Rudd, the owner of Ezell's Chicken. Um, and for a lot of people who don't know that African-American businesses were disproportionately impacted throughout COVID. Um, financially i had one other question i initially was going to ask why you know why this was important but you kind of answered that but why is it i'll say is important for businesses to step up and answer the call like i think it's cool safeway started supporting black owned businesses and has really challenged ourselves to put black owned businesses on the shelves like i know boom Boona cafe is now inside a safeway and things like that are starting to happen why do you think it's important for businesses like yourself and strong brands like DoorDash, Ezels, and others who have made it through the pandemic fairly well, why is it important for them to step up and help rebuild the business community um, within the African American community? Well, you know, Jay, I think back to the time when you know you present Ezels and the founders with the Servant of the People Award, mm-hmm. and you shared it in you know, your opening comments, remarks, that you would go places and you would ask for a show of hands for those that can identify a Black-owned business. And more times than not, you would see no more than three hands. And if three hands went up, two out of the three would say Ezell's. Mm-hmm. That in itself says that there's a need to raise up more Black businesses yeah. and support more Black businesses. And again, you know, as we talk about the impact of redlining. And when I think about when Ezell's opened up in the Central District back in the 80s, and it was at least 80% predominantly uh, Black people that lived in that area, and it was a vibrant community of Black-owned businesses Mm -hmm. that were recognizable, that people identified with, that are no longer around. And we need to embrace the idea of supporting black owned businesses. I mean, closing the wealth gap. Mm -hmm. I mean, something that our kids can be proud to say, yeah, my parents own a business. You know, it's a sense of pride that comes with that. It's also, you know, having an opportunity to participate in the economic, uh, uh, getting a piece of the economic pie. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's very relevant. It's important. And, you know, through better uh, 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 opportunities to access to capital comes better education, better health care. I mean, there's just so many benefits 
of having African-American businesses, uh, the impact on violence. You've heard, heard the saying, no finance, no romance. Um, you know, when people are struggling, anxiety is high, uh, frustration is high, and, you know, we can address a lot of the things in our communities and be more contributors in a positive way through economic empowerment. So, again, I see this as a huge opportunity, and hopefully others will see it the same, that, you know, it's so important for us to have um, black-owned businesses that are thriving. Man, Lewis, Lewis Rudd, thanks for joining us on the G and Ursula Show. Coming up next, it's We Hear You and Words to Live By.